Hello, I'm Joshua Crumbaugh, and I am here to talk about robbing a bank over the phone. I know, a crazy title. Uh, but how an expert social engineer can talk you into anything. So uh, with that, we have just 20 minutes here today. So I'm going to jump right in. Just a little bit about me. I am the founder and CEO of a security awareness and uh, and a secure or social engineering awareness company called Fish Firewall. I am one of the world's foremost experts on phishing and other social engineering attacks and help to co author curriculum um, on this exact subject. Now, I like to jump right in. And so the first thing in social engineering that people are going to do is that they're going to create a pretext. That pretext is going to be based on data that they can find out about you or your organization or whoever they're targeting. And so in this case, I call up because as impersonating their ISP. I did this because I had found that their well, when you look at a company, you can tell who hosts their email. And when doing this, I had found that it was some obscure, small internet service provider in the US. And when I started looking this, this company up, I found a support forum that was pretty much devoted to nothing more than customers complaining about how terrible this email service was. And since they weren't on Gmail or Microsoft 365 like a, a normal company, I felt that this was a really good opportunity. And so I call up and I say, hey, I'm with Quality Assurance. And their caller ID says that I am indeed calling from, uh, from the ISP because you can spoof this sort of thing. And, uh, and I say, hey, I'm from Quality Assurance. We've been losing a lot of customers because of our poor email quality lately. And so they've hired me to come in and to proactively fix a few problems. All I need you to do is test a few things. If it works, we'll get you over to the new server and resolve all of your problems. Um, so at this point, I call up and I don't know who I'm going to talk to. I'm just trying to, you know, get whoever they refer me to because I, I didn't have a lot of intel on who handled these things at the company uh, or at the bank in this uh, in this instance. And so I call up and uh, and I want to start building rapport with whoever it is. And so what they will do is they'll create this us against the world scenario. Because if I can work with you to solve a problem, or if the bad guys can work with you to solve a problem, uh, they can go in or get you to do things that they wouldn't other that you wouldn't otherwise do. Now, it's important to note that I do this as an ethical hacker. I do this legally, it's all sanctioned, but I get hired to break in and, and to test security. And sometimes it's it's physically, sometimes it's using my word, sometimes it's over the phone. It really varies from time to time. But what does this look like creating an us against the world scenario? Well, let me play some audio from a real social engineering call here. That way we can test it. No, just on yours. Okay. Um, or at least for now, I don't, hey, there shouldn't be any issues with the other ones. Um, so you know, right now I'm just trying to troubleshoot and make sure that yours is set up correctly. Um, it's that same IP address. I just threw the uh, file out there, but I can give it to you again if you need. Uh, bear with me one second. But uh, I got to give you the name of the file that will go at the end of the IP address. Oh, okay. Uh, you go ahead. It works this time. It's just like you want to come in. All right, go ahead. All right, it is okay. forward slash, okay. all lowercase, email, underscore, config, dot exe. So that's forward slash, e-m-a-i-l, underscore, c-o-n-f-i-g, dot exe. So the web page cannot be found. So over the years, I've found that the more difficult I make it for somebody to run my malware, the more likely they are to run it. 
it's this weird psychological principle that says that the more time somebody has invested into something, the less likely they are to throw it away. And so if I make this more and more difficult, you're more likely to ignore red flags later on. So recon is everything. Knowing that they had this problem with their email was critical here. And I like to say, never underestimate human blindness when it comes to personal selfish desires. Now, sure, we all want tickets to the World Cup or we want a Ferrari or a Porsche or whatever it happens to be. But it's those more realistic, more achievable goals that really drive people's behavior. And it's, it's those thorns in the side. If you can offer to remove them or if the bad guys offer to remove them, it's amazing what people will ignore. Now, here is a perfect example of exactly that. So the web page cannot be found. Right, let me try it again. Forward slash. E-M-A-I-L underscore C-O-N-F-I-G dot E-X-E. Let me uh, double check my, let me check the server. Oh, I, I was wrong. <laughs> it's capital E on email and capital C on config. That'll make a difference. <laughs> it definitely does. It's a tiny little program. It shouldn't take but a second to download. So the antivirus kicks in. Now, this is where, if I could see you, I would ask for a, a show of hands on how many people think it should be game over right now. Of course, it wasn't, or I wouldn't be sharing this with you. So in social engineering, they will have thought out every common scenario. And if I'm asking you to run malware, it is very plausible that an antivirus is going to trigger. And so I have a canned response right there, ready to go to overcome that objection, if by chance it happens. And so here's what that sounds like. Antivirus software is kicking in since it says it's an unknown uh, publisher. Oh, it is an unknown publisher. My uh, boss just pulled it or, you know, put together the file. And the way those things work is with signed uh, DLLs. Um, does it give you an option to um, ignore it? No, give me just a second. I'm going to try this again. Because I need to go grab that. What antivirus software do you have? I might be able to find yeah, some stuff. I, uh, And the only act, only action that gets me is delete. Oh, okay. The don't run this program and delete. That's the only two actions that gets me. All right. So at this point, a lot, especially in the ethical hacking side of things, I see a lot of people give up. But the reality is, is that true criminals never break character. Um, and and so if, especially with ethical hackers, they're, if they're any good, they're not going to break character either. And that actually brings me to one of my favorite stories in all of social engineering. And it's what I call the denial of thinking attack. So we had this major multinational law firm that we were doing an assessment on. And I call up on the very first day of the assessment within about 10 minutes of getting the, uh, the go ahead. So after the kickoff call, within 10 minutes, I'm on the phone doing exactly this. Well, I call their help desk and I say, hey, listen, I've got a buddy that wrote an analytics program. He's from MIT. And when I try and run it, it just keeps blocking it. And I'm impersonating a junior partner at the law firm. And, and this law firm was based out of that area of the country where there's a lot of MIT and Harvard influence. And so I was, you know, I, I used this thing and he says, well, that's because of this uh, program that's called Bit9 that we have. And it's, you know, you can just get around it by using my username and password. And he proceeds to give me his password and so instantly I had the keys to the kingdom because he had the highest level admin privileges you can get. 
And so now we're getting to the physical assessments and, uh, and I had had two coworkers strike out because this particular law firm had really good security. So as opposed to striking out, we're like, well, we have full access to everything. Let's just put a schedule or put something on the gatekeeper's calendar. And so I show up to my physical assessment and I say, hey, I'm here to inspect uh, your servers. We've got some latency issues. You should be expecting me. And she says, yes, we are. Come right with me. Hands me a badge, hands me a physical key to get into the server room uh, or the data center. And I escorts me right there. She takes me in, leaves. I am now in their data center on a company. Well, I, about five minutes goes by and somebody comes in and uh, and he's def definitely from IT because he says, who are you and why are you on my uh, domain controller? And so I look at him and I say, well, latency. And I used to love to use latency because there's something about talking about milliseconds that just gets people to let me do whatever I want. Um, and so I go for my go to and he leaves, sure enough. And I'm in there for another five minutes. And at this point now, some very, very, the, the biggest guys that work at this law firm um, come in and, uh, and you can tell they go to the gym for hours every day. And, uh, and they say, sir, you're going to need to come with us. And at this point, I realize I'm being bounced. Now, we have what we call a get out of jail free card that we can you know, give away and it'll say, hey, this test is sanctioned and I don't get in any trouble. But it becomes a matter of pride not using that thing. And in my career, I've never used it and didn't want to use it then. And so as I walk out into the hallway, I notice that both sides of the hall are lined with people. And so I said, oh, they're looking for a show. Why don't I give them one? And so I just start making up all kinds of stuff. I mentioned how it's my anniversary. Now I'm going to miss my dinner plans. My boss is going to make me work late. I stick to my cover story. I even throw in just a very chew or a few choice cuss words. Not too bad to really offend, but just enough to make it real believable. And so I get on the elevator and I'm gone. And they look at each other and they go, what happened? because they know exactly how to handle this. They actually help advise on cyber incidents with you know, or corporations around the world. And what happened was it's called a denial of thinking attack. They were too busy being entertained to see what was happening right in front of them. So I like to say, uh, I call this thing the my boss rule, but what it means is never put yourself directly on the opposite side of somebody. And if somebody's trying to social engineer you, that's exactly what they're going to do is they're going to be working with you to solve this common problem. And they do that by blaming everything on their boss. Here's what that sounds like. Thanks, Roland. Hey, this is John again. Hey, I'm, John. I'm sorry for bugging you, but no, uh, no. so my boss asked me if uh, we could just run a PowerShell script instead. So that's how we got malware on their systems. But at this point, I realized because it's taken hours to get here that this guy will let me do anything. And I learned a long time ago that time can be a valuable weapon. And so this is a Friday afternoon at a U.S. bank. And I don't know if it's the same way uh, everywhere in the world, but in the U.S., everyone wants to get out early on Fridays and go to the beach or whatever they're happening to do. For this guy, it was golf. I heard him talking about his golf plans and... Uh, in the background as I was on his computer. And so I wait until 5.15 to ask him for a meeting in person that following Monday. Here's how that went. All right. Okay. It looks like we're all set. Um, just due to how late it is, I don't think even if everything turns out to be good, that uh, we're going to be able to do the migration today. I'll talk to uh, my boss and get back with you. Um, okay. If not, then maybe Monday I'll just come by and uh, you know modify any settings that need to be modified, and uh, there then we'll be all set and ready to go. Sounds like a plan. I'll see you Monday then. I will see you Monday. All right. All right. Thank bye. You. So the easiest way to talk your way into a bank or to get access is to schedule that appointment. And so now that following Monday, I come in and he introduces me starting with the president of the bank. And he tells the president of the bank to log into his computer, get up and walk away and that I'm going to work on it. 
And then he continues to go and tell each and every person in the bank to do this. I am having flashbacks from my days in IT, having to go from one computer to the next to keep up with my pretext. Well, around, I want to say, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, he comes to me and he says, hey, we are celebrating this month's birthdays upstairs. If you'd like to come and have cake and coffee with us, we'll be upstairs. So at this point, there's one teller downstairs, one armed security guard, and me. The teller and the armed security guard are both at the front. And I'm way in the back, uh, probably close to 100 yards away from them. And, uh, and so I move to the next office over and I look across the hallway and the bank vault's wide open, the part with piles of cash that's, that are just sitting there. And so I'm able to go in and take a selfie of, uh, with you know, holding a stack of $100 bills. And that eventually ends up going in the report. I leave, they have no clue what happened. So now Tuesday, I come in as Joshua, the ethical hacker, not Jason, the quality assurance guy from their MSP. And when I, I walk in, you can see the look on the teller's face. She knows who I am, what happened. She calls the bank VP. He comes about halfway down the stairs, sees who I am, turns around. I never actually see him again ever uh, in the course of this engagement. I was there for another week. Um, and then about 15 minutes later of very awkwardly sitting there, that bank vice or that bank president walks out and he looks at me and he says, you bastard. And that, my friends, is how you rob a bank over the phone. But what is the future of AI driven social engineering? And that to me is the part that concerns me. You know, we've already given computers voices. They've gotten, AI has gotten very, very intelligent over the course of the past, well, really just 12 months here. And so, you know, it can understand us. It can process logic. It can stay on task. I can use AI to go sell to people. And I have. And so what concerns me is when an AI can go out and do this OSINT and be automated to do exactly what I just did. And in fact, we just saw an entire deep fake Zoom call in Japan to convince an accountant or uh, somebody in a finance department to send money off that was fraudulent. And so, you know, this, the future of AI and all of this is, you know, is we, we're only just beginning to scratch the surface. And my belief is that the only way that we can fight AI is with AI uh, as we move into the future here. So with that, uh, thank you everybody for your time today. I wanna leave a few minutes for questions here. So do we have any questions? Let me see. Well, I'm not seeing any questions in my uh, in my chat here. Um, I will say while I'm waiting to see if any questions pop in that the number one way we can combat these things is by simplifying our training, by making sure that we have people that understand communications at the core of all of our training initiatives and that we treat our users with kindness if we really, really want to be effective. 